Hi, everyone. I spoke earlier about sometimes wanting to do things simply because you enjoy them. And today, I was sitting down reading through Much Ado About Nothing, one of my favorite plays, and a place that I often go. And sitting down and enjoying what is probably one of my favorite love stories of all time, that the path that Beatrice and Benedict take to get to one another is so winding and interesting and different from most things that we even see today. I love that both of these people are so similar to one another. And their verbal repartee is vicious, but you can tell that there is a certain level of being impressed with one another, despite the way that they sort of express so much vehement hatred with one another. I'm taking a look at a speech today after Benedict has gone disguised to a party and heard what Beatrice really thinks of him. Oh, she misused me past the endurance of a block. An oak, but with one green leaf, would have answered her. My very visor began to assume life and scold with her. She told me, not thinking I had been myself, that I was the prince's jester, that I was duller than a great thaw, huddling jest upon jest with such impossible conveyance upon me that I stood like a man at a mark, with a whole army shouting me. She speaks poignards, and every word stabs. If her breath were as terrible as her terminations, there were no living near her. She would infect to the North Star. I would not marry her, though she were endowed with all that Adam had left him before he transgressed. She would have made Hercules, have turned spit, yea, and cleft his club, and made the fire too. Come, talk not of her. You shall find her the infernal eight in good apparel. I would to God some scholar would conjure her, for certainly, while she is here, a man may live as quiet as in hell, as in a sanctuary. And people sin upon purpose, because they would go thither. So indeed, all disquiet, honor, and perturbation follows her. He can't help but complain about her. Because he can't not talk about her. Even in all of this, this put-on vehement hatred, you can see Benedict's deep affections for Beatrice already showing through, even at this early portion of the play, before they have played this sort of trick on one another. And the trick is often given too much credit, that without thinking that they loved one another, that they would not have changed their minds. It's clear that they cannot stop thinking about one another. And they have to talk about each other. They cannot help it. It's one of my favorite love stories and something that brought me a smile today. So I hope that it brings a smile to you. Until tomorrow. Cheers.